They know why. Oh. It's been a while since I've done one of these, and I'm so sorry. I've been busy. Um, I've been thinking a lot about this um, uh, situation um, about somebody who I've never met that I love, and they're going through a hard time. I don't even know all the details, but I know this person is going through a hard time. And I was thinking of what I'd tell this person if I knew them and could. I was telling, I was saying to myself, I would tell them to fight on. Um, and that saying came from, um, uh, a program on Netflix called Sing On. Um, it's on Netflix. It's really good. It's a singing competition, competition show. And if you have been watching me for any length of time, you know that I love music of all kinds. I'm kind of, well, a music freak, aficionado, whatever you want to call it. Any genre, any time period, I just love music. Um, and I was watching uh, Sing On, and I was thinking of this preacher, of this um, preacher and what he's going through and what, um, what he's uh, facing with his family and what I'd tell him if I knew him. Um, personally, I would tell him to not, well, sing on, but I would say, fight on, don't give up, don't throw in the towel. You're still called, although you may have made a few mistakes and blundered along the way. You are still called, you are still, you are still where God wants you. And I was thinking, um, not only for preachers or people we know in our lives, but I was thinking that message goes for everybody today. I know this time around the world has been crazy for people. People have been losing jobs. People have been getting sick. People have been, um... People have been just upended all around the world and although although we're starting to get back to quote unquote normal, I just want to tell people out there to fight on. To fight on. Don't lose your fight. If you are still here, you're still in the game. If you are still here, you're still here for a purpose. If you are still here, God still has a plan. He's not giving up on you. He will never give up on you. And you can make it and you will make it. And this is not a raw, raw sermon. This is not a, everything will be alright if you spin around three times. Because reality is, folks, Everything will not be all right, no matter how many times you spin around. Sometimes the fight takes work. Most times it takes work. Most times your miracle includes you and God working together to achieve it. A miracle is something that comes into your life unexpectedly. But sometimes, before that miracle, you have to fight. You have to fight. You cannot give up on your family. You cannot give up on your career. You cannot give up on God's dreams for you. Because He needs you. The world needs you. You cannot afford to let whatever the devil's doing in your life impede what God is trying to do. Sometimes thing, we think things are sent by the devil, 
that they're really sent by God to perfect us and to give us muscle. I've said this many times before, that weight, weight um, as in, as in um, the weight of something, um, brings about muscle. That's why people bring weight, lift weights because the resistance brings about muscle. And the fight that you're in right now, whether it be a financial fight, whether it be a familial fight, whether, whether it be just a fight with you, which is the most important fight at all, of all, with you fighting with yourself, it's designed to bring muscle. It's designed to help you carry stuff. So don't give up on the fight. I don't care what you have to do. You stare in the face of that devil and say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No tongue of that rises against me that he will not condemn. Um, my favorite fighting scripture is Ephesians 6. Be it says, finally, my brethren. I like to insert names in there. So I would say, Finally be, finally Rachel, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then it lists all the armor. It says, put on the whole armor of God. Oh, it's just so beautiful. It's Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. It is just beautiful. It teaches you how to fight. And the problem with this generation is we give up too easily. We, we make one mistake in ministry, one faux pas, we hire the wrong person, we have an indiscretion with our family, we're like, oh, we need to step down, we need to, you know, um, we need to not do this anymore. The devil is a liar. Stay right there. Stand flat footed. You're not going anywhere. You are not going to die here. You are not going to die here. And when I say die, I don't mean necessarily phys physical death, but you could die spiritually. You could die financially. You could die relationally. And I say to all of that, you are not going to die here. You are going to to live, to declare the work, works of the Lord. You are going to do what God has called you to do. And no devil in hell is going to stop you. The only thing that can stop God's plan in you is not the devil. It's you. It's you that can stop God's plan in you. Because your thought. And your being that can stop you. Not the devil. The devil can only whisper suggestions. The only problem why sin entered the world is because Eve listened to the devil. Eve listened to the devil's suggestions that she would be wiser than God and her eyes would be opened. That's the only reason why sin entered the world. If she, if she said, get behind me, Satan, I'm not listening to this and just walk away, the world would be in such a better state. But it's because she listened. Stop listening to those negative voices in your head, those demon-suggested voices, and tell them to get back. Tell them you're not going anywhere. Tell them you're fighting for your family. Tell them you're fighting for your church. Tell them you're fighting for your ministry. Tell them you're fighting for yourself. The greatest battle that you will ever face is not the outside battle. It is not your financial battle. It is not your family battle. It is not whatever outside battles that are trying to come against you. It is the battle between you and you. 
It's not the battle uh, with the enemy. It's the battle with the inner me. With the inner, with the inner me. What are you really thinking about yourself? What when you go to bed at night? What when you are lying beside your husband or wife? and they're sleeping and you're wide awake at four o'clock in the morning. What are you thinking? And for us single people, what are you thinking about yourself when it's all quiet and the only thing that's shining down on you is your nightlight? Um, and you are alone with your thoughts and no one's there. What are you thinking about yourself? What internal battles are you are you fighting? You're fighting yourself and that's where the inner me, the enemy likes to fight your inner me, loves to fight your war with you. So the real war is not anything external. It's everything internal. You've got to silence those internal voices. Those internal voices that tell you you're not good enough or you can't preach like him or the world won't listen to you or you can't do a business like her or you're not as smart as this person and that person. Oh, tell the devil to go back to hell where he came from. God called you. God called you. He created you with that talent for baking. He created you with that talent for, for singing. He created you to raise that autistic child. He gave you the gifts to be, to be that man's wife. He gave you the gifts to be that woman's husband. He gave you the gifts to be that, to be that daughter's but mother. He gave you the gifts to be that to be that, uh, to be that, to be a daughter to that father. He gave you what you needed to do what he's called you to do. And a lot of people say, oh, I don't think I'm not enough. I've said it, well, I don't think I'm enough, or I don't think I can do it. I can't preach like him, or I can't do this. But the devil, but God has said, I don't need you to do it like him. He's already doing his ministry. People are, are already getting what they need from him. I need you to preach like what you have in you. What you have in you is something that the world has never seen before. And I don't need you to copy anyone else. I need you to go forth in what I called you to be, what I called you to do, and know that you don't have to be enough. Because if you were enough, I wouldn't be here. There would be no need for me. And he said, there is no way in hell that I'm making you good enough so you don't need me. I'll say that again. He said, there is no way in hell, heaven, or earth that I'm making you good enough so you don't need me. He said, I'm a jealous God and there'll be no other gods before me and that is including you. We've made ourselves the center of our own universe. We need to get her out of our own way and realize that God is still God and God is still on the throne and he will give us the tools, he will give us the resources to do what we need to do, to do what he's called us to do, to do what he's fashioned us to do. He doesn't need a mom like, those kids don't need a mom like her. Those kids don't need a dad like him. Those teachers don't need a teacher like them. They need a teacher like you. They need your gifts. They need your talents. 
They need what you bring to the table. They need you. They need you. They don't need anyone else. Because if they needed anyone else, that other person would be there. You don't have to be enough. You just need to know that he's enough within you. Hear me. He's God's enough within you. Within you. When you get saved, when you get saved or get to know the Lord or invite Jesus into your heart, he, he, he puts his spirit inside you and that spirit enables you to do what you need to do. It gives you characteristics that you need to have to be all he's called you to be. All he's asking of you is a yes and all he wants from you is to be you. And be the best you, you you can be. And the only way you can be the best you you can be, you can be is through him. Because he created you. He loves you, beloved. He loves you and wants you to succeed. And the only way you can succeed is to know that he's got your back. And he will never, ever, ever let you go for any circumstances. I was thinking of what we say to people and back to that person again. I was thinking about that person. And I was thinking of um, these two interviews that I saw. Uh, kind of what they made comments about what's going on with that person and whatever. And I said, instead of, and it was so funny, these two interviews, they said, they talked about that person, and I'm like, after that, after they said that, they said, that person's my boy, man, or whatever, they were acting all cool. And I was saying to myself today, if that person's your boy, you wouldn't be talking about him. You'd be praying for him. You'd be covering him in in prayer. You'd be praying for his family. You'd be praying for his ministry. You'd be pr you'd be praying. And I think we're so easily we're so easy to talk about people that we don't understand that we could be in the exact same situation, given their circumstances, given what what they have to work with and I'm not excusing sin repentance needs to come um, people need to come before the Lord and repent yes they need to, yes they need to but they need people around them to pray for them to just to just um, tell them that God's not finished with you yet and I was also thinking of the term fall from grace. What a stupid term. You could never, ever fall from grace. I don't care what you've done. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you've murdered somebody, cheated on somebody, whatever. You could never fall from grace. Grace is given. It's not a place where you can fall them from. from. It's something that God gives his unmerited favor. We don't deserve grace. You can't fall from grace. I don't know who made that stupid saying up, but it's not true. There is no way you could fall from the grace of God. There is no way you can fall from the grace of God. And if People have to um, retreat um, every time they they make a mistake or or um, make a faux pas. We all have to be retreating every day, and I could tell you from my little experience. I'm not a huge preacher or whatever. 
But I can tell you, just, just from the preacher that I am, the pressure is so hard um, when, when you have people looking at you, when you have, you know, people that are accountable to you and people that you're accountable to. Um, it's just so difficult. And I think instead of thinking that, that um, people are superhuman, I think they need to be covered. And covered doesn't mean excusing. Covered means I will shelter the dirt that's on you until the Lord can restore you and work through you. And I believe that God is working everything out for your good. Whether you're a preacher, whether you're a mom, whether you're a teacher, whether you have COVID um, right now, God is working everything out for your good. And I, and I pray that healing and restoration be your guide. And I declare that this will not kill you, that this will not kill you, that you're down, that you're down, but you're not out. I declare, I, I declare that this faux pas, whatever it is, this mistake, that this trial is not going to kill you. It's just going to better you for whatever God has planned. It's going to make you grow spiritual muscle. It's going to make you raise those kids in a much deeper way. It's going to make you lead that congregation in such a more understanding way. Because a lot of times when we haven't uh, gone through... Uh, what our congregation has gone through, we can't relate to them. But when we have gone through what our congregation has gone through, we can empathize, we can say, buddy, here's what I did when I was in that con uh, situation. Not in a, not in a um, judgmental way, but we can, we can come alongside uh, people and and guide them and the Lord said uh, if you see your bro brother caught in a fault to restore him to restore him and to to be there for him there there are times and situations where um, depending on your your situ your um, uh, position in that person's life, God will allow you to speak into that person's life. But remember, when you're speaking into that person's life and bringing correction, it is only God that uh, will give you that position in that person's life to do so. So I don't think everybody and their brother needs to have an opinion about your life and your family and if you're in ministry. I believe that God will set certain people around you with the authority, uh, with the accountability to do so. Not even just with preachers, but with any, with everybody. And I don't, unless a person is in your circle and unless God has ordained a person to uh, bring correction or to you know to set you lovingly on the right path you shouldn't be listening to those people who think they know what you did or what you didn't do or what's going on in your home or what's you know or what you should do about your kids, or what you should do about this, and your bills, and your health, and your whatever. Sometimes, most times, I think that we're in a culture 
of just very nosy people. We like to know what's going on, who is doing what with who, and why is that going on. I think we need to just be still and mind our own business. Unless God has ordained us to speak to that situation, I think the best thing to do oftentimes instead of posting, I think the best thing to do is shut our mouths and start praying. We need to start praying for people. We need to start undergirding people. We need to start covering people. And I'm not talking about covering sin. I'm talking about covering them until they are restored. It reminds me of what uh, what Noah's sons did. No. Uh, yes, I think it was Noah. It was either Noah or Lot. But I think it was Noah. One son uncovered his father's nakedness. Another son blocked his father's nakedness until he was clothed again. Sometimes when people are bare and they show their weaknesses and we find out something about them, we just like to spread it on Facebook or we like to we like to spread it on Instagram. We like to say, oh, t titter, 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 titter. Shut up. Start praying for the person. Start fasting for the person. And if you know the person, call them personally and not to judge them or say anything about the situation. But just say, man, girl, how you doing? How can I help? Is there a certain way that I can pray for you? And not in this duty way to collect gossip, but just to be there for them. Because when a person has a faux, um, makes a mistake or something that the whole world knows about, the last thing they need is judgment. Because usually they're judging themselves harshly and you're just reiterating what the devil wants to happen. And what they need is your prayers. And what they need is your love. And, and what they need is your encouraging word. Girl, you could come back from this. Man, you can come back from this. You're not, you're not out. You're just down. Come back from this and know that God still loves you. And know that he cares for you for you and know that he's not finished with you yet. And we just need to understand that everything is working together for your good. Everything is working together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And I tend to think that even sometimes those who don't love God and are just doing their own purposes, um, things are working together for their good as well. For, for them to know the Lord and to be called according to His purpose. So I think whoever you are, a uh, saint or a sinner, everything is working together for you for your good. The Lord the Lord has plans for you that you wouldn't that you don't know of. So honey, don't give up. I don't care how hard it is. I don't care you if you feel like you're not enough or or you just don't feel like you're adequate. But know that he is adequate. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. And He loves you. He's still there for you. He's sending resources. He's sending strength. He's sending peace. He's sending joy right now. Just receive it. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Don't fight joy. Don't fight peace. 
don't like what he's trying to do in your life. Know that he's sending it for your good. Know that the fight is not over. Knowing, know that he's telling you right now to fight on. I will be praying for you. And know that God, God's got your back. God's got this. And he's working it together for his purpose. Kirk Franklin uh, did a video one time about a cake. He held up a bunch of raw ingredients like some eggs and some butter and some sugar and some all of that. And he said, with the raw ingredients, when you taste them, um, when you taste them separately, uh, without cooking them, they taste nasty. But when you put them together, they t they turn into something delicious. That's what he's doing with everything in your life. Every good thing, every bad thing, every mistake, every success, every failure, every loss, every triumph, every every trial. What with whatever you're going through. Trust me, beloved, he's working it out for your fate. He's working it out in your favor. And he just wants me to tell you to hold on, to fight on. Don't give up. You've come too far to give up. Um, so thank you guys for listening to this sermon. I love you all and I will be praying for you. And get your fight back. Get your fight back. Some of you have internally given up and externally given up. Some, some of you have given up on that business. Some of you have given up on that career. But get your fight back. Get your fight back. You cannot afford to give up because God has a plan. There are people that need what you have to say. There are people that need what you have to give. There are people that need what you have to minister. And you cannot afford to give up. You cannot afford to give up because the moment you give up is the moment you forfeit your destiny and Forfeiting your destiny is not an option. Because there are people just waiting for you to blossom into what God has called you to be, into what he's called you to do. There are people that need you. There are people that need your baked goods. There are people that need your business sense. There are people that need your real real estate acumen. There are people that need whatever you have. There are people that need your mothering, your care, your love, your joy, your peace, your encouragement. Whatever God has ordained you to do, there are people that need it. You cannot give up because if you give up, what will they do? How will they sell their house? How will they um, bake, bake healthy, cook healthy meals for their kids if you don't start that healthy meal business? How will they have things to read to their children if you don't start that company where you illustrate children's books or where you write children's books? People need what God has put inside of you. Don't give up on the God dream that he's ordained for you. If you're having dreams and you can't, and you can't get rid of them and they're with you all the time, they're not your dreams. They're God's dreams. You hear people say, follow your dreams. I would say, no, follow God's dreams. And you know it's a God dream when it won't let you go. 
that's how you know him. Don't give up. God has, just take one step. One tiny step. What step can you take today towards your God dream? What step can you take today to start on that goal? It only has to be a little st step. All right, guys. I'll see you later. Bye. One step at a time. There's no need to rush. It's like one in the flock. I'm falling in love. It's gonna happen when it's supposed to happen, and you'll find the reason why. One step at a time. One step at a time. There's no need to rush. It's like one in the fly. I'm falling in love. It's gonna happen when it's supposed to happen and you'll find the reason why one step at a time. One step at a time. There's no need to rush. It's like one in the fly. I'm falling in love. It's gonna happen when it's supposed to happen and you'll find the reason why. One step at a time. One day at a time. This is for the old schoolers. Sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking of you. Help me today to do everything that I have to do. Yes, journey's gone, sweet Jesus. And tomorrow may never be mine. Help me today, show me the way. One day at a time, I'm only human, I'm just a woman, help me believe in what I can be, and all that I am, give me the I have to climb, so for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time, one day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking. Give me the strength to help me today to do everything that I have to do, to do. Yes, journey's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be Today, show me the way one day at a time. Do you remember when you walk the mountain? Jesus, you know, if you look in the law, it's worse than a man. Pushing in heaven 
I'm calling my mind, Lord, for my sake, teach me to take one day at a time, one day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking of you. to do everything that I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be mine. Help me today, show me Jesus, that's all I'm asking of you. Help me today to do everything that I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus. And tomorrow may never be mine. Help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Um, oh, as I was about to say, as I was saying that, the Lord started to impress on my spirit that some of you are taking on too much. You're running here, you're running there, you're helping this person, you're helping that person. And the Lord said, take it one day at a time. Take it one day at a time. Know that he's with you. Just take it one day at a time. Some people have lists and lists and you try and get everything done in one day. You can't do that. You're only one person. Take it one day at a time. One step at a time. One task at a time. You're not superhuman. You're just human. Remember that. And you're not meant to help everybody, take on everybody's problems. Take it one day, one step, one moment, one task at a time. That's what happened to me because I was doing so much. I was in an e-group. I was doing one of these every day. I was rushing here and rushing there and doing this for this person and doing that for that person. And you know what? I hit a wall and if you notice there was a few weeks there where I didn't post anything I didn't write back to anybody I didn't do anything because I hit a wall so what I had to do is step back and prioritize and say do I need to do this right now this is a good thing but is it a God thing and that's what some of you out there need to do. Is this a good thing? Or is this a God thing? Because some good things are not God things. And some of you, as I said before, are taking on too much. And you're getting stressed, and you're getting tired, and you're getting angry at your family. You're getting, you're getting frustrated with yourself because... And the joy out of the task is, is gone because you're just doing too much. And that's what I had to, I had to stop. I, I had to stop doing sermons every day. 
I had to withdraw from the e group I was a part of. I had to, um, I had to prioritize what is essential for me to do, and what is a choice for me to do. So these sermons to me are essential, but they're not essential to do every day. And uh, the e-group, although it was a good thing for me to do, God said it wasn't a God thing for me to do. So uh, I thought I would um, just for now um, withdraw because it was not because it wasn't enjoyable or whatever. It was because it wasn't a God thing. It was a good thing for me to do. They were a Christian group and they were Christian ladies, but it wasn't a God thing for me to do right now. And some of, some of you need to ask this question. Is it a good thing that I'm doing or a God thing I'm doing? Is it essential or is it something that can wait or something that I can ask for help from somebody else? Because sometimes asking for help is, for, is the key. And sometimes some of us, me included, we're afraid to ask for help because we, we think that it, that it says weakness, but it actually says strength when you know you need help with something. So I'm really going now. Uh -um. This is about my third close, but I'm really going. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. One day at a time, sweet Jesus, that's all I'm asking of you, help me today to do everything that I have to do. Yesterday's gone, sweet Jesus, and tomorrow may never be alone. Help me today, show me the way, one day at a time. Bye guys. See you later. He will my strength when I am weak. He will the treasure that I seek. He will my all and
seek only on each face surely the presence of the Lord is in this place surely the presence of the Lord is in this place I can feel his mighty power and his grace I can feel the touch of angels wings I see glory on each face surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Be magnified, O Lord. You are highly exalted. There is nothing you do. Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. Oh Lord, be Bye, guys. The Lord just took over, which he often does. Better be going now. Bye.